Well, I'm afraid my accomplishments. I'm afraid my accomplishments for yesterday are a negative. I did not. It was. I don't know. I'm still coming down from my soda habits or what. But after we last spoke, I went back and got involved in some computer work that I needed to accomplish. And then the day just disappeared on me. So I failed in my necessary accomplishments when it came to certain things and some minor things accomplished um, with regards to updating some memberships uh, that I needed to get uh, updated because of the video. I actually was um, trying to update some of the YouTube channel stuff. And one of the things I updated was my um, Google account because I run out of a tremendous amount of storage doing these videos. When I uh, upload a video, when I upload one of these videos at its highest quality, it uploads it right around two gigs. <laughs> And that's because it's higher quality, uncompressed HD. And it's kind of funny because one of the things you find out is that now Google offers a flat 15 for free. And it also offers all the way up to 30 terabytes month for like three hundred dollars <coughs> and I suppose if you're doing a tremendous amount of video editing and have a tremendous amount of footage to upload especially 4k footage that's what that's really for that you could easily well not easily but you could accomplish 30 terabytes in 4K because raw footage of 4K is incredibly large. Depending upon the compression rate, because your compression rate impacts how much space it takes up. But anyways, so that was um, rather uh, surprising that you could spend up to $300. It used to be a case where they would say, unlimited storage for a certain amount but because so many people are doing video now and it's clogging up their servers they're definitely not doing unlimited anymore <laughs> I did notice that on my phone though because I, I would keep, keep deleting a file after every evening so that I could upload more and still on their pie chart I had 89% full, so I thought, well, why is it 89% but there's only two files on there? I've removed them, emptied the trash bin, yada yada. And it's because for some reason, a lot of the information was staying on my phone and still counted towards the Google Drive thing, so, or the storage. So, after deleting a number of files on my Google Drive within my actual phone, it dropped to like half of what it was, but it was still large. So anyways, 
the short ter <laughs> version uh, answer is that I chose to upgrade to 100 gigabytes for two bucks a month, which is inconsequential and works for me for what I'm doing right now. I would love to be more plex where I'm doing so much work video related that I need that extra space. It's possible I will get to a place where I need uh, more of that as I start shooting short films here in the fall, hopefully. But right now, two gigs is enough for us to pull off the cardio blocks. By the way, yesterday was episode 10, so we've passed a, a good marker. Um, I'm excited. I was looking or thinking about it the other day that if we're going to try and accomplish 100 episodes by uh, the end of the year, that we can accomplish it. Let's see what I do with the math in my head. As of yesterday, let's start for today. So 11, 41, 72, 102. So, I think that's right. Yeah, so roughly, no, I'm not being right, I'm sorry. I'm having a brain fart here. So 14, So sad. I can't do math in my brain right now. So let's see, 14. I could get to 24 by the end of by the end of August if I did it every day. Then 30, 54, then 85. So right around November 15th or 16th, if I do not take any breaks, which I can't promise that's going to happen. I would hit 100 episodes, and I have roughly 46 days after that that I can implement and push back into other days and take breaks and still reach 100 episodes by the end of the year. So my goal is a 100 episodes at least. I think that's a very realistic goal, and it would be really fun because. I've done cardio blogging before, and they got up to 68, which I was really surprised by. And some of them were part one, part two. But this device helps a lot, the treadmill meaning, because it's only set to 20 minutes. And so that helps with um, timing, in a way. Makes the vlogs not too long. And still a good length, I think, uploadable as one video. And I know some people will watch the entire video. Most people won't. But it's uh, it's important for me, and I feel good about it. And I'm doing. Uh, I'm still thinking about the um, I guess we'll call it field trip versions of the Kanye vlog, so I'm walking with people and talking with them. Still very excited and serious about that. I'm hoping that becomes a thing with the series. I was also noticing, strangely enough, that you, depending on the kind of shirt that I wear, how it makes my face look. It makes me look puffier in some cases. Uh, heavier on some occasions than others. So the shirt I was wearing yesterday, for example, made my face look really heavy. And I don't quite know why that is. Whether it's because of shadowing or what, but it's really interesting to look at it and see how it makes your face look. <sighs> don't get me wrong, I know that I'm a larger guy right now, and I accept that. I'm doing what I can 
to begin the process of altering that more and more. But there are certain videos where my face definitely doesn't look as heavy or puffy as it did yesterday. And there's really not a logical reason for that because my diet had not changed between yesterday and the days previous. So we'll see how this look, looks when it's uh, online. I got into a debate with my family last night about the whole political scene. And it's strange because we do agree on a number of things, but my mom believes that it's not worth voting for either person. And I'm not sure, well, I don't believe that's the approach you can take. I don't believe it's a matter of you can say, well, I didn't vote for it. I think it's a matter of if you don't vote for one, then the chances of another getting in are that much more dangerous. So, and there's just uneven coverage of both candidates. That's just reality. They've, and even the media themselves are calling everything that Trump does divisive and racist and the whole thing. And, I'm sorry, there's nothing that he said that's racist. <laughs> he keeps talking about the problems in communities of people with certain ethnicities. That doesn't make him racist. Making racist would mean it's all their fault. It's all their fault. That's what Hillary does. That's what she says all the time. Why people aren't sensitive enough for our human, we don't have enough, have enough humility. I hate to break it to you, but there are so many poor white people. <laughs> There's no white privilege there. And most of us are not these bragging, believing we're better than anybody else people. We struggle to get by just like everyone else. We're all in this together, but I don't believe the government wants us in it together because divided we fall and that's really where they're at. We're really looking at moving closer and closer to martial law and selected representation by government. If you think that's a thing of, of yesterday, you're wrong. It is not. You just have to have the reach and the technology and they have that. There's technology that's been in existence that we don't even know about. They don't release it all at once so that you're up to date with them. They release it as they progress further and they feel like they can hand you the scraps of what they've already created. Think about it. Why would any technology give you... Why would every piece of technology be released to the public at the same time they discover it. They wouldn't be able to make fixes on it if they were on the same track as you. That's just not how it works. amazing what we have in technology yeah. some miraculous things but I think there's so much more we have yet to discover that is already out there surgeries that occur in other countries that we don't have access to yet medical procedures and that's the other thing that's happening if you follow the news a little bit for example my mother is on Etna right now and Etna is leaving 11 of the 15 Affordable Care Act exchanges. They call it Obamacare, but it's not actually called Obamacare. It's called Affordable Care. 
they're leading those exchanges <laughs> because Edna has lost over $200 million in that program. And what's eventually going to occur is someone like Hillary is going to recommend single-payer health care. Single-payer means the government. And when the government is in charge of your health care, like in other countries where that happens, they have justification processes because they'll say, well, everybody's paying in and we have to justify the best way for those funds to be used. And let's say you're 80 years old or even 60 and you develop cancer. If they be able to decide that it is aggressive enough, it's reached a certain stage and the likelihood of survival is 50% or less, they can say, well, it is not justifiable that we handle this under the costs related and therefore we will not treat you, but we will do everything within our power to make you comfortable. That means the remission will be withheld for those who can afford it. It will be held for those who are potentially supporters of the leaders. And you will see death councils occurring. That's just logic, potentially. It's not emotion. It happens in other countries, go look into it. It's a dangerous time. I wrote yesterday on Facebook, people need to be aware that when it comes to the government, eventually what will happen is that when you become, so when the, the country becomes so divided, and I believe this would be Hillary that did this. She's the kind of person who would do this because of where she's at. She has no limits. She can commit laws and she's never held accountable for them. She's committed perjury on multiple occasions. Changed her story multiple times and nothing happens to her because the media is owned by the people who own the Democratic Party. And they paint a picture for you. And if you believe Hillary's a good person overall, then it's probably because you've been painted to believe that picture, just as if you've been painted to believe Trump is evil and racist and divisive and all that. They painted a picture for you. Well, my point with government was, I believe Hillary would be the one to do this. You say we're divided enough. You see how much Obama has accomplished with executive actions that would be considered unconstitutional. Well, Hillary will get to a place where she says we're too divided in the best interest government to protect the people, we will institute martial law. This is also why we see police stations around the country, 30 cities so far, they have declared them racist locations. For example, just what happened in Milwaukee recently. They are calling that a racist act, even though it happened to be a black officer that shot a black person who on body cam show, showed he had a gun. But they're taking control of these police stations, educating them in their own way from a federal perspective when it's supposed to be state and local. That's federal control. That's the beginning of it's another step toward martial law. And then 
after a certain point, when they have all of this control of these police stations and education and training and that whole process, they can declare martial law and the voting process discontinues. Because the government says, we will pick people who we believe truly represent you as a nation in these locations and they will help be your voice to make sure we're making the right laws but it won't be up to you anymore it won't be up to us anymore and that could happen 5 10 15 20 years down the line but the process of developing to get to that point has accelerated in the last really 16 years but especially in the last eight years bush wasn't any better by the way um, and once that happens there'll be no control by the people it will be in another country style closer to socialism communism really and we will be subjects not individuals you don't think it happens it's just research Research shows you history repeats itself. Power corrupts and eventually there will be not royal families necessarily they will call themselves, although eventually they could, but they will call them board or whatever of the country. And those people will pass their power down to their descendants and if the family has no descendants, they'll pick someone new who will have the power, have the luxury and the freedom that you and I will not have, or the children of tomorrow will not have. And it will go and go until revolution breaks out. Here's where dividing people makes a revolution harder. If you're not all together on the same page and you're taught to hate each other, you never know where the bullets are coming from, and they're going to. Dangerous times, my friends. Dangerous times. Don't let them divide you. We all have challenges. We all have challenges. I can promise you that 90% of the people I know are white. That's just how it turns out. It's just because of the businesses I interact in. Well, maybe maybe eighty-five percent. Maybe less than that even. But we couldn't think more of people of different cultures. I come from a uh, profession that loves there being voices from different walks of life. This is not a racial battle. This is not a cultural battle. This is a war waged on us from a psychological standpoint. Yes, I know I'm on the treadmill. Thank you for telling me that. It's a, way, it's a war waged on all of us as citizens of the United States. I hope we don't forget that we are the people, all of us together. And that we can stick together and stop this unfortunate de-evolution of our country back to the place we were before 1776, which was not here, obviously, it was overseas, but from happening here as well. All right, take care of yourself. Hope that didn't depress you, just gave you something to think about. And have a wonderful day. Smile, enjoy a walk in the rain as long as it's not thunderstorms. And I will see you tomorrow. Be well.